Good afternoon. Welcome to Community Corner. I'm Ryan Nicholas Gray. My two friends are... Okay, hello. My name is Alan Connie Castle. I'm Gary DeWitt Taylor. Welcome, everyone, to the second to our second interview today. Welcome, everyone. Today, today, today we welcome Eva. Our guest is Eva Buckmaster. She's a good friend oh. to all of us. She is a living example of what individual working is hard to do to, to connect her life purpose and engagement. She has lots of great information to share with us today. And our viewer and audience, so ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome Eva Buckmaster. Thank you very much. Um, hello, Eva. Hello, Eva. Thank you. Eva, good afternoon. It's good to see all of you. Good to Thank see you. you. It's Eva, good to see you, too. Please tell us about your life growing up and about, and about your family. Uh, I was born in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And we moved um, to Michigan, Ann Arbor specifically, in 1972 to get special ed help from my younger brother who is disabled. <clears throat> and at that time, I did not have a disability. Mm. Um, I became disabled after I was a young adult. Wow. But before age 22, I started having trouble. Uh, mental illness, uh, but I did not know it then, but it turned out to be bipolar disorder with some panic and anxiety and some post-traumatic stress disorder. Later on, um, allergies, asthma, and diabetes, and angina came along, but it was a progression. Oh. So it's just the two of us, my brother and I. Uh, my parents are both deceased. Oh, I'm very sorry. Me too. Yeah. Like, what was that thing about stress? Post-traumatic stress disorder. Most people know it as PTSD. Okay. And it's what happens when you've lived in a very bad situation, something very bad has happened to you. Uh, living through a hurricane does it to some people, going to war does it to some people, uh, being shot, being raped, uh, being molested. There are a lot of different things that can cause, being someone, seeing someone killed. A lot of things can okay. cause it. Mm -hmm. The idea, and it's one of the things Lucky helps me with when I have flashbacks, okay. is um, trying to deal with the memories that come with it mm -hmm. so that I can function through life. Okay. That's pretty cool. Um, like what are your hobbies in internet? Besides what? loving God, <laughs> yeah, uh, I love to read. I like to make bread because I like punching down the dough when I'm frustrated with something. Uh -huh. I'm told uh -huh. I make a mean lasagna. That's I love name. music, a wide variety of music. Nice. I like to garden. Mm -hmm. nice, nice. And I love my volunteer work. Yeah, that's cool. Tell us about jobs you have had in the past. Um, I've done a lot of cashiering work. I've also done a little bit of security guard work. And I have done a bit of uh, what they called membership coordinator work for a group called Pure Choices. So, the, and I worked on a horse farm for a short <coughs> while before I became allergic to the horses. So Eva, share with our audience your journey through diagnosis of mental illness. When I was first mentally ill, I started going to a therapist and saying, I don't know what's wrong with me, but something's wrong and I can't tell you what it is because I don't know what it is, but something doesn't feel right. And they said, okay. how can we help we, if we don't know what's wrong? You need to tell us what's wrong. And I'm like, I don't know what's wrong. That led to suicide attempts. Yikes. They did not keep me in the hospital. They kept turning me back to my dad to take care of me. He didn't live with me. They just were releasing me to him. Eventually, the hospital decided after about six attempts that they'd go ahead and hospitalize me against his wishes. Hmm. Um, it still took another 10 years before somebody said, you know, I think we may be giving her the wrong medicines because I was seeing things like colors melting on walls from what they were giving me as prescribed medicine, and it wasn't helping, and I kept ending up in the hospital. This little intern, they told me I wouldn't live to see 25. Um, this little intern said, I think they may have misdiagnosed you. I want to read your file. A couple days later, she comes back to me and she says, I think we should try you on this experiment called Depakote. And this was 1993 in like February. Depakote. And Depakote's widely used now, but back then it wasn't widely used for people who had bipolar disorder. Hmm. It wasn't? It wasn't then. It is now. And it had been used for people who had uh, seizures. Oh. 
And they had discovered that people who had seizures and bipolar did better on their bipolar. So they were experimenting to find out if it would help people with bipolar who didn't have seizures. So I signed up. I mean, I wanted to be better. And um, yeah. the sun started to come out. Um, that year, I actually took an ambulance class, um, survived my grandpapa dying. Um, my mom had a stroke, and I started going back to college. So um, a lot of good things happened that year because uh, I ended up with 10 credits in college that fall <coughs> at Oakland Community College. Good for you, Eva. Good for you. Eventually, I picked up my associate degree. Eva, good for you. You need it. It's important. I'm proud of you. Thank you. It seems like you made it okay through all that, which is good. I've had periods that were real struggles, yeah. and sometimes I still have dark periods that are real struggles for me. Yeah. And I have not been able to hold down a full-time job, but I am able to do volunteer work, where if I have a bad day, I can call in. Uh, I have as much trouble with my physical health at this point as I do with my mental illness. Yeah. Um, and I have some problems, like at home, I need someone to help me in and out of the shower some days because I get dizzy and could fall and hurt myself. Oh. So they send someone in to help me a couple times a week. Um, but it's better than it was. I'm able, with my service dog, I'm able to live alone. I don't do well without my dog. My dog is an integral part of my care. Uh, please define the types of helps you have, uh, you have received. Besides medications, which there's been a wide variety of, some of which have worked. Um, there's been individual therapies, group therapies. A lot of what I do now are outside. I'm not receiving OCCMHA services anymore. I'm receiving help through a private doctor now. And I'm going to support groups in the community, uh, groups like Emotions Anonymous and Al-Anon. Oh which any person that's just sitting out there watching TV today could go to. You don't need to have a specific diagnosis of something. They're open groups, they're 12-step. There's also uh, DBSA, Depression Bipolar Support Alliance. I've gone to that. Okay. So I believe that each person needs to do things to help themselves, not just wait for other people to help them. What different agencies have you worked with and what types of support? Yeah, for a long time, it was just Oakland County Community Mental Health, and there was no authority after the word. And they just basically um, provided me with medicine and occasionally with therapy. Eventually, they decided to provide me with some therapy and help me get housing to get me out of a negative home situation. And then I moved into Holly, and they announced that there was now an authority, and I was going to work with a group called TTI. And I was with them a long time. Okay. And then um, after I moved to Southfield, I went to Easter Seals for a while before I ended up going uh, independent. Eva, so what types of committees have you worked with? I started out on the TTI CAC, Consumer Advisory Council. Okay. And from that, I was looking around at all these case managers who had huge stacks of cases to work with and not enough hours in the day. And I said, you know, peers, people who have mental illness or a disability could help other people because they're doing better and they could help others now. Maybe they could carry some of the load. So I wrote this 13-page paper, which I eventually turned in to Jeff Brown, who at the time was the executive director of Oakland oh, County Community Jeff Mental Brown. Health Authority. And he gave me an appointment and invited me to look at some communities at the county. And at the communities at the county, um, I ended up joining the Innovative Peer Support Specialist Group. Okay. And I ended up joining the Consumer Empowerment Group, which is now the Empowerment Group. Yep. Eventually, I also added group home monitoring, the Volunteer Group Home Monitoring Committee, which needs volunteers. <coughs> Later, I became facilitator of the Consumer Empowerment Group, but then just before having surgery, I dropped that because I was like overbooked and went to the Consumer uh, Strategic Planning Work Group. Okay. And I've also joined the MSIP Board of Directors, which was in desperate need of persons who receive services being members of the board. People will need their own transportation. Information is at www.msetmi.org. Thank you. Uh, 
Okay, how's the help that you receive been positive? Sometimes it's helped me stay out of the hospital or help me interface with other organizations or agencies. Okay. That's good. <laughs> In some cases, it helped me deal with my family. Okay. Um, parts of my family and I got along great, parts didn't. Um, like everybody, some family dynamics were better than others. Oh. Uh, that doesn't mean you don't love your family, it just means that some people you get along better with than others. Oh, true. And um, they also helped me uh, get my first letters for using service dogs. Oh, that's nice. That's cool. That's awesome. <coughs> Tell us what you have chosen to do to give back to others. That's a lot of the reason I'm on committees. Um, because I want to make services better for other people or to encourage services to be better for other people. And by being on the committees and seeing not only what's happened to me, but what I hear happening to others, I can hopefully be a voice to speak. I also volunteer within my church and talk about, I'm open about the fact that I have mental illness. I'm open about the fact I have health issues and in a way to try and destigmatize the issue. I don't want people to look at me as being a negative. I want them to look at me and see me as a survivor, as a, a person who keeps going. As a positive. As yes. a positive, yes. Yeah. So because I'm not afraid of that, the stigma can't hurt me. <laughs> That's good. Gentlemen, you, yeah. are a, you are a shining example of what it means to, you have told, what you shared with us so far has been both touching and humbling to hear your wonderful and joyous tale. Uh, you made me really understand that there are many disabilities in the world. People should not make fun of you. People should never make fun of anybody. Mm -hmm. Every person deserves to be treated with dignity and respect. Exactly. Every person. True. So Eva, tell us about your living arrangement. I live in an apartment with Lucky. Um, with my dog, I can live independently, but that is with the dog. Um, I don't handle living alone without the dog, and okay. we've tried that, and that's one, that was the first reason I ended up with a service dog. Oh, so living range with a dog, well, that, well, that's, well that's a good idea. Um, Lucky does a number of things. He tells me people were at the door. He tells me if something catches fire. He does? Um, I had a toaster oven caught fire while I was folding socks in my bedroom. Uh -huh. He came and got me before the alarms went off. Oh, cool. Lucky tells me to take insulin when my sugar is too high. Uh, Lucky helps interrupt post-traumatic stress flashbacks by hitting me in the chin. Uh, even when I'm in like the hospital, he stays overnight with me in the hospital. Oh, that's nice. Okay. So he's very much, as you can see right now, he's not worried about anything. So he says, I'm okay, so he'll sleep. Lucky's 13 and a half, so he's like willing to rest. I'll tell you something. I, 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 really, like, I really like the dog. I really <clears> like <throat> and, and he loves going to church. Well, he hot. sits up and wags when we get within a half mile <laughs> to cool. church. He gets very excited. <laughs> that's cool. He, uh, he, I love Lucky. He loves you too, David. He always wags for you. <laughs> <laughs> and when he likes kittens too. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Since David he is my cats. favorite feline trainer, I thought I should put that in there. Thank you. Uh, good way to go, Lucky. Um, 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 please share your knowledge of them. Uh, please share your knowledge about service dogs. Okay. Most people know service dogs are, are like leader dogs for the blind, which uh -huh. is one group here in Michigan. Okay. There are many groups in the country that do dogs for the blind, okay. but there are also many groups that train for everything else or Ooh. for blind and other stuff. Uh, Paws with a Cause is the second largest that I know of in Michigan, and they will train blind that have additional issues mm -hmm. or for things that are, and do not include blindness, people in wheelchairs, people that need help standing and walking, people that need uh, the dog to pick things up and carry it or reach up and push buttons or carry food even. Huh. Wow. Um, de oh. Dogs for the deaf, they do not train diabetic dogs. Okay. So if you have diabetes, they do not train for that. There is Paradise Dogs here in Michigan. Uh, they're in Fenton. And they do train diabetic dogs, and they train for a number of disabilities besides that. 
Uh, they, again, train to the individual need, but they're a much smaller organization training less dogs per year. Okay. There are some individual trainers, and then you have to find those, and the best way to do that is to Google service dog providers. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, a guy, diabetic dog would be what? Uh, like when he alerts me to take insulin. Oh, okay. Oh. Because he can smell my sugar getting too high, it's chemistry change in my body. So he alerts on me, and I know that means I need to take extra insulin, which I carry in my purse or in my pocket. Um, how can he smell that? A dog's nose is at least five times and maybe more, as much as seven or more times stronger than ours. So yeah. they can smell things we can't smell. It's easy oh. for them. Oh, cool. That's cool. And that is an evidence-based practice. If you, if anyone who's been around the mental health field much and very involved has heard the words evidence-based practice, mm -hmm. and that is an evidence-based practice. All okay. Right. What allowed you to receive your service dog? Well, the first step was getting a letter from the doctor saying I needed one. So my doctor needed to be on board, and I've had a number of doctors over time that are still on board. Okay. Um, saying, yes, this person needs a service mm -hmm. dog, and for instance, if it's for mental illness, they would say uh, this person has a mental illness under DSMV, whatever number <clears throat> they're referring to, because you know that comes out every so often, they revise the numbers. Okay. It was four, they might go with five now. And they don't have to put your specific diagnosis in the letter. Now, most organizations are going to want them to fill out additional paperwork that says, what is the person's illness? That won't go into public. It won't? No, that would only go to the organization so they know what to train the dog for. Oh, okay. They need to know, you know, are you training for diabetes? Or are you, are you, training, for, are you training for schizophrenia? And you need to disrupt the behavior? Um, are you training to remind a person to take medicine? Are you training to uh, interrupt a, uh, a, a PTSD attack, which is a disrupt? Lucky even one day when I was in physical therapy after my <clears> knees <throat> were operated on, told the physical therapist I was having trouble breathing in the pool because I lost the ability to breathe well enough to call for help. Wow. And he was on the side of the pool and alerted my physical therapist. So what training has your dog received? That was a process, and it was basically start with A, then do B. He's had uh, some obedience training, of course, oh. and then he had to be trained to each individual need. Each dog is trained individually. Um, what is trained for my dog would, might be different than for yours. Okay. Um, Lucky, for instance, looks me right here if I need to take insulin. Okay. He'll kiss me everywhere otherwise, that's okay. just love. But if he looks me real hard right here and here and turns me red, that means I need insulin. If he's hitting me in the chin, that means, Mama, that's a post-traumatic stress flashback and you don't need to listen to it. Oh. Don't fall into what you're remembering. It's bad, for, try to forget it, block it out. That's right. Barking, I need to follow him. If his tail's down and his ear down, that means there's fire and I need to see where the fire is. Okay, okay. Okay, barking with everything up means I need to follow him to the door or to the door buzzer for my apartment. Okay. Because there's a buzzer system so I can listen to people telling me they want to come up from downstairs so they can't just walk into my building. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Um, did, you need tra uh, did you need training to learn about caring for and using the sofa stock? Um, I was petrified, absolutely petrified, petrified. of dogs as a small child. And the first dog I wasn't scared of was when I was about 12 and we got this little puppy. So yes, I needed training to learn how to make a dog behave. Ooh, okay. So I took dog obedience classes hmm. in so addition to working with individual trainers. Okay. What does the word petrified mean? Extremely <coughs> afraid. Not just a little afraid, but huge afraid. Oh. My mother encouraged me to be afraid of dogs. Yeah. She painted dogs as being mean and vicious, and I had to find out the hard way. There, most of them aren't. Yeah. Most dogs yeah. are loving. What? And so I had to learn that. Okay. What if so. any are the legal parts of having a dog with you wherever you go? Well, for one thing, he has to have his license, which means his rabies shot. Oh. has to be up to date at all times. Two, he always has to have all his other shots up to date because he can't be a health risk to anyone. Okay. okay. Three, if he's vicious in any way, like if he bit you, he'd automatically be put down. 
Put down? Put down. He, what? he cannot be vicious. He would be put down. Okay. That's, that's not an option. Uh, four, um, he cannot steal food in restaurants and grocery stores. So I repeatedly work on training in that throughout his life, reminding him, no, you can't take this, no, you can't take that, and testing him. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. Okay, so it's an ongoing process. It's a lot like having a child in some respects. Oh. You keep teaching and teaching and reteaching and reminding. Uh -huh. And then you teach something new just for fun. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Now this dog doesn't like toys, so his treat is getting loved. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, that's good. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that made you happy, didn't it, David? He's dog certified. <laughs> and is he licensed as, as, other, 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 as other dogs are? He is licensed. He has a regular dog license. He also has an ID with his picture and the fact that he's a service dog, his name, his certification oh. date, what he's trained to do, oh. and a basic description of him. You know, let me tell you, I had a dog named Shakespeare, who was my favorite, my favorite dog in the whole world. He was a brand new boxer. He was, fortunately, passed away. I'm sorry. I know Eva. He was a good dog. He I had a dog named Asgore. He died of cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was so in love with me. And my dog, Aaron? Uh -huh. do, 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 you, do you have a dog growing up? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, um, I had, um, um, I had a dog named Spanky. Spanky? Uh -huh. Now that used to be a dog for a TV show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going back in my day. Okay. Um, does Lucky need special food and if so, what kind? Lucky only gets his own dog food. Okay. Um, I buy it at any of the major stores. Um, it is Imes, which is what my vet recommended. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a good he one. only gets the same food all the time and I get the smaller kibble. Okay. okay. He does not get any dog treats because they're not nutritionally balanced. Mm -hmm. We want to keep him healthy. Okay. So Point. his treat is getting extra petting, extra love. Well, well, uh, last night he spent an hour in my lap getting extra brushing. Oh, that's good. That's cool. Yeah. Um, he will crawl on my lap and tell me he wants petting. He will ask me for a scooter ride. He loves scooter rides. Yeah. Um, you haven't seen me on it as much, but I often use a scooter both in my apartment. Uh, when I go to the malls, when I go to the stores, I ride the scooters, you know, the big baskets and mm -hmm. all that. Yeah. He loves those. He thinks that he puts his hands up on the window bars sometimes Ooh. and pretends he's driving. Oh, he does? Um, he thinks that's the best thing and he's real happy. <laughs> <laughs> the stores I shop in regularly know him by name, yeah, ask me how mine. he's doing, want updates on him. He's popular. Tell us about your love of cooking. Cooking? C cooking. Cooking. Yes. Well, let's see. My lasagna's gotten a couple blue ribbons. My macaroni and cheese got a couple blue ribbons. Hey. Back when I was a kid, um, all of which were family recipes. Uh, I cook for myself. I enjoy cooking. If I have a friend over occasionally, I would rather cook for them than order out. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will often like make a pan of lasagna and then put it away in squares that I can reheat in the microwave. Mm -hmm. oh. I'd rather do that than buy frozen dinners. <laughs> that sounds good. I enjoy <laughs> cooking. It's, it's a hobby. It's a hobby for you? It is a hobby. It sounds like a good hobby. I, I buy huge amounts of Vidalia onions and chop them up and freeze them in Ziploc bags. Mm -hmm this time of year so that I can break off chunks all year long and add them to my meals because I like the sweetness of Vidalia <laughs> onion. Cool. I mean, I'm that much into it knowing what I like. I know, David, you're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I love my PCP go always, that's me. <laughs> Hi, David. Uh, that's all I have. Me too. I, I think it's David's turn. Oh, sorry. Um, what life skills are you able to do independently like I do? Most of my life skills, although I'm not a perfect, well, I need some help with house cleaning because the chemicals from cleaners set off my asthma Ooh. and they will put me in the emergency room. Ooh, I've even good. been in stores where like a chemical cleaner broke in the aisle next to me and the um. fumes put me in the emergency room. Whoa. So someone needs to clean my, uh, do the chemical cleaning for me. I cannot do heavy lifting. So if I can bring things up on my scooter in bags, fine. Mm -hmm. But if it's, it won't turn on my scooter or it's too heavy, yeah. then I need someone to help me. Uh, so a lot of days I need someone to steady me, getting me in and out of the shower so I don't fall. 
Well, that's important. Uh, other than that, I do most things independently. Okay. Most of the time I do things independently. Now you understand, independently for me is dependent on the dog. Okay. Okay, um, Lucky and I are a team. We're dependent on each other. Okay. And he gives me the independence uh, I didn't have before. Uh, that's cool. David, would you please close for me? I will, I am. Thank you. Thanks so much, Eve, for me, I will get today. You express such goodness and confidence. You desire to be a productive and helpful individual is most successful in your modeling as an example for all of us. Keep up the good work, Eva. Thank you, David. Thank you, gentlemen. And Lucky, too. <laughs> Thank you, Eva. Lucky might wake up long enough. If you start petting him, he'll wake up for you. I, yeah, I'm glad you My name is David D. Taylor. You are watching ON TV. Please check us on YouTube.com. My two friends are. My name is Anne Connie Castle. You have been watching ON TV and CMN and Was on YouTube. I'm That's great. You're watching ON TV. Look for us. Episodes on YouTube. And watch on YouTube.com, so check us out there. Bye.